Good morning, everyone. Praise the Lord. God is good all the time. All the time, God is good. Um, so how's everyone doing? You, I'm sure you all had a wonderful day. Yesterday, our very first day of VBS, we learned that God is with us, so we need to trust God. We also saw how uh, he parted the Red Sea for the uh, people of Israel. So today is our second day. Our, aren't you all excited? I am. So today we are going to learn that God gives us everything that we need. So we need to trust God. So let's pray. So let's bow our heads, close our eyes, and let's pray, okay? Dear Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, for this beautiful morning that you have blessed us with. Thank you for giving us a good night rest, waking us up this morning with good health, breath, and everything that we need. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for everything that you are in our lives. Lord, you take such good care of us. Lord, we don't deserve any of this, Father, but you have thought about us, you have cared for us, you have given your life for each one of us, O oh Lord. We are so thankful to you. Lord, we give the second day of VBS into your hands, O oh Father. Lord, we pray that you bless each one of us. We pray for the teachers. We pray for all the children. We pray for the volunteers. Everyone who has been part of this, this year's VBS, we give them everyone into your hands, O oh Father. We pray that you bless each one of us. Lord, we pray for the children, Father. Lord, when they learn today about a new, uh, that you are our provider, Lord, help them to trust in you completely, Lord Jesus. Father, we give this day into your hands, O oh Father. Bless us, O oh Lord. In Jesus' precious name I pray. Amen. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to day two of the Wilderness Escape Virtual VBS 2021. Today, we'll focus on the book of Exodus and talk about how God provided everyone with manna and quail from heaven. By learning more about today's lesson, we will learn how God provides us with exactly what we need in our lives. And at the end of the day, we just need to trust him. Happy today? Good. 
Well, what did you learn yesterday? Can anyone remember our Bible point? If you said, God is with us, so trust God, you are correct. We wanted to focus on one key word in that phrase. Do you remember what that is? Yes, that's correct. Trust. Now to help us remember the word trust, we wanted to use different trust letters to help us not forget as long as possible through this VBS, right? So in the word trust, what does T stand for? Did I hear you say, try me? If so, excellent. We learned about how Moses and the Israelites crossed the Red Sea, escaping from Pharaoh and the Egyptian army. Not only did God hear the cry of his children, but he rescued them from what was impossible, which was dividing the sea to provide a safe passage for Moses and the Israelites. God reminded the Israelites to trust him by reminding them to try him. As you may remember, we have five Bible points that we are going to learn this week. Let's remember what they are. One, God is with us, so trust God. God gives us what we need, so trust God. God gives us strength, so trust God. God saves us, so trust God. God guides us, so trust God. So for today, our Bible point is, God gives us what we need, so trust God. Now let's think about this for a few moments. What do you need every day? Can you say out loud what you think you need every day? Some of you may have said you need to brush your teeth every day, or you need to take a bath every day, or you need to eat every day, or drink water every day, or play every day. Did you say some of those? Yes? If so, good job. Did any of you say we need to pray every day, or sing songs every day? or read the Bible every day? If so, good job. I'm pleased to hear this. Why is it important to pray every day, read your Bible every day, or sing Bible songs every day? This is to remind us that we need God in our life every day. We need to remind ourselves to pray, to read, to sing, so that God can hear us, thank him for supporting us. And he can listen to us sing thanks for helping us, so that he can listen to us learn about Bible stories that teach us to live the life as he wanted us to. So let's take a look at the situation that Moses ended up in. The Israelites just witnessed a more fantastic miracle than their escape from Egypt. Does anyone remember how they were let go? Through Moses, God laid out ten plagues for Pharaoh and his people. Each plague was getting worse than the next one. Pharaoh's hardened heart was not dismayed by the plagues. But finally, Pharaoh could not stand the pain of the final curse, and he told the Israelites and Moses to leave. 
for what an amazing miracle that God performed for his people. But the Israelites forgot to trust him when they were stuck at the Red Sea. They thought they would die. And they thought, why did Moses take us away from being slaves and servants of Pharaoh? But God once again showed them a fantastic miracle by dividing the Red Sea. Now, about a month after that, the Israelites were having a hard time traveling through the wilderness. Not much to see and not much to eat. As their tummies started getting hungry, they started thinking about being back in Egypt. At least they had food there. The Israelites began to become grumpy and complain, and they were upset and tired. Do you, do you ever feel like that when you are hungry? Do you get angry, tired, asking your parents for food? Sometimes your parents may not have the food ready. So what do you do? Maybe you can drink a glass of water or grab a snack. But you can't do that in the wilderness. When God heard his people complaining, he told Moses that he would provide food for his people. Why do you think God did this? Every time something goes wrong, people forget about God, even though he does all these fantastic things for them. Are you like this? Do you complain or get upset? Maybe you ask yourself, God, why can't I have what others have? Why can't my parents provide me the same things as my school friends? However, like the Israelites, we forget we have so much already as supplied by God. Think about it. Maybe you had food today. Many kids have not. Perhaps you have clothes to wear. Many children do not. Perhaps you live in a house or an apartment. Many kids don't have the same means or are limited. Maybe you go to school and have great teachers and a lot of friends. Many children do not. Maybe you have fresh water from the tap that you open and you can drink. Other children have to walk very far away to get fresh water. So this is how we will remember our second letter in trust, which is R. R stands for resourceful always. What does resourceful mean? It means having the ability to find quick and clever ways to overcome difficulties. So what did God do for the Israelites? He provided them with food from heaven. How amazing is that? For 40 years, as the Israelites traveled through the wilderness, no one went hungry, because God is always resourceful. I hope you remember the central Bible point for today. God gives us what we need, so trust God. The T in trust stands for try me, and the R stands for resourceful always. May God bless you as you go into your learning for today. Please enjoy the flight. Check the lock, the
تعرف ان الناس اللينز متفلدك استاين بالبلا Welcome back folks. I hope you enjoyed your trip to the Red Sea. Is it just me or have we been flying across the stairs for a long time? I'm getting hungry. Well, it looks like there is a whole lot on this menu. I was expecting some biryani. Looks like there's some bread and some foreign meat. Oh, I think that's manna and quail. That's what God provided the Israelites, right? Correct. I believe we're approaching Elam, which according to the Hebrew Bible, was one of the places where the Israelites camped following their exodus from Egypt. It is referred to in Exodus chapter 15 verse 27 and Numbers 33 and 9, where a place with 12 wells of water and 70 date palms, and that the Israelites camped near the waters. Elam is where they received both manna and quail, the speciality of this flight. It's basically an oasis, which is a fertile area in a desert or semi-desert environment. Oases also provide habitats for animals and plants. Wow, this manna tastes like honey and meat. It's delicious. I'll wait for seconds. Ladies and gentlemen, we are about to land at Elim. The climate is about uh, 70 degrees Fahrenheit and uh, cooler than the desert around. Ladies and gentlemen, please prepare to fasten your seat belts and enjoy your stay. Today's theme is of is about manna and quail. Michael, I think I'm hungry. Okay, should I ask Amma to get you chore? Uh, no, Amma. I I don't want Amma to get me chore. Why can't she just get me something else? But you like chore. I like chore too. You know, this sounds like when the Israelites complained when God rained down manna for them. Manna? What's manna? The Bible says that manna is like wafers with honey. Hmm. Like biscuits? Yeah. I think we can make manna at home. Let's go to the kitchen. To the kitchen. Welcome to our kitchen. Before we start. Please make sure to preheat your oven to 400 degrees. Now, the ingredients we'll need are half a cup of butter, one cup of sugar, two eggs, and two cups of flour. And honey and vanilla extract. Uh, also, you will need a, a cookie tray lined with parchment paper. So first, we're going to cream the butter and sugar. We've already put the sugar and butter in here, so now we're going to mix it. And start. Let's make it a bit faster. Okay, now we're gonna add two mm, cups of eggs. Come on, here we go. Teaspoon of vanilla extract and two teaspoons of honey. Now we're going to mix it again. Now we're going. To 
going to add flour little by little. Whoa. Whoa, that's a lot of flour. So now we mix. Now it's mixed up, we can add the next bit of flour. Wow. You have me all this. Okay. Whoa. What's and that? now we mix it. Now we're going to add our last bit of flour. Boom! Stop, Michael. Okay. okay, clean up the mess you made. Okay. Okay, it's picked up. Now we're going to give it a nice mix. A really nice one. Whoa, that's a lot. Okay, now we're going to add half a teaspoon of batter. Now we've got our manna lined up like cookies. So we're gonna pop it into the oven. It'll, It'll be, be there for five to eight minutes. Oh, this is gonna be exciting. This is our manna. It took us like only six minutes. So now let's eat it. Delicious. Tastes a little bit like cupcake. Mana is good, but uh, can I just please have chora? Your broken heart is the power Yeah, God
Let's bow our heads in prayer. Oh God, our loving Heavenly Father, we come to your presence with joyful hearts. Thank you, Lord, for enabling us to study your word through the VBS. Help us, God, not only to love your commandments, but also to obey it. Let us always remember that you come to us and walk with us when we walk through the wilderness. You are our loving companion when we feel lonely and fearful. Make us earnestly study the VBS lessons each day. We thank you for all the VBS teachers who take great pains to make us understand the lessons. We thank you for our parents who encourage us to study the Bible at home. We thank you for our friends and relatives whose company we enjoy. We thank you for our church and its ministers who inspire us to lead Christian life as followers of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We pray for the poor, the hungry, and the homeless people who live miserable lives. Let us join all attempts to provide them with food and shelter. We pray for old age homes where old and forsaken people are taken care of. We pray for our church and its institutions and all those who serve the church in different ways. We pray for our dear Rachins, Periyavargi Sachin, and Saju Samu Rachin, and their families. We pray for all the families of our parish. Make us a loving and caring community. O oh God, make us witnesses of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ in our personal lives and community lives. All this we pray in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen.